Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Now that the year is wrapping up, it is time for one of my favorite videos to do of the entire year, which is my top five books of 2016 video. I have done this for the past couple years running. I will link my old videos down below. These are gonna be in no particular order and probably most of them are not really gonna be a surprise because I've talked about them all before on this channel, except for one, I think. And let's get right into it. So the first book that I'm going to be including on this list is actually the only series that I'm doing. Everything else is a standalone. It is Rick Riordan's Heroes of Olympus series. This is probably not a surprise. This is the sequel series to the Percy Jackson and the Olympians series. The reason that I am doing this one and not Percy Jackson and the Olympians is because uh, I only really liked about two and a half out of five of the original Percy Jackson series, and it was consistently getting better. And so then when he got to Heroes of Olympus, this is when he pulled out the big guns of the found family and the lots of cool female characters and people of color and just so much found family that I couldn't stop crying about all of my children that I personally raised. The Percy Jackson series is one about demigod children who are children of Greek and Roman gods and there are various adventures and bad guys that they have to face that I don't want to go into too much but let me just say that if you have read the Percy Jackson series and you haven't gotten around to reading Heroes of Olympus yet, definitely trust me and read these immediately because there was so much shrieking while reading these books. I just, I couldn't get over it and I love them so much. So to give you an idea, I got these out of the library and then had to buy the box set because I just love them so much. So the next book that I wanted to include on this top five list is one that I read way back in the beginning of the year. This was H is for Hawk by Helen MacDonald. This is a memoir that is about a woman who was working as a history professor in Cambridge, Oxford, I've forgotten now, and basically her father that she had a very close relationship with died very suddenly of a heart attack, and she had a long-standing um, history of interest and participation in falconry, and so basically as a way of working through the grief of losing her father, she decides to train and raise a goshawk, which is one of the most difficult birds traditionally to train. This book was absolutely lovely and sad and literary, and it was just so cool because she's a history professor. She really goes into the history of falconry in Europe and other places, which I thought was also really interesting. And she also goes on this whole long exploration of T.H. White's book, The Goshawk, which is where he details his own experience raising a goshawk, and he was doing it very, very badly. And so that's one of the things that she is discussing is basically she's contrasting her own experience of raising this bird with T.H. White's really disastrous attempt to train his bird. And this book has a lot going on in it, which is one of the reasons that I really loved it. It was a history history lesson and a personal account of a woman getting through grief and talking about birds of prey, which I was completely in love with birds of prey in middle school, so that definitely played into my interests. And, you know, I am also an English major, so talking about T.H. White always gets my interest. He was the guy that wrote Once in Future King, if you're wondering who this is. And it was just a really moving experience. I did this one on audiobook, and the audiobook is narrated by the author, and she has an absolutely lovely narrating voice. So if you enjoy audiobooks, I really enjoyed the audiobook version of it. So number three on this list is going to be Sarah Sarah Brennan's Tell the Wind and Fire. Basically any time Sarah Reese Brennan finishes a series or puts out a standalone, it's gonna be in my top five because Sarah Reese Brennan is basically one of my favorite authors ever, but this one was no exception. This is a modern day-ish urban fantasy retelling of Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens, which I also read this year but didn't love as much as I love Tell the Wind and Fire. And basically if you have read Tale of Two Cities, what Sarah Reese Brennan did that is different is she made Lucy Minette the main character and gave her actual agency instead of just having her be like this beautiful figurehead like she was in Charles Dickens, which I love Dickens, but he has problems with women. This is just a thing. So this is set in a sort of split version of modern day New York, where there is a light city and a dark city. And it has been this way ever since the discovery of magic. So there's light magic and there is dark magic. And the dark magicians are basically imprisoned in the dark city. And they are basically kept as slaves and servants for the light magicians who require them to be able to continue to use their magic. And one of the things that Lucy says in the novel is she points out that we always hate those we rely on, which is a really kind of killer 
point. So the plot of this begins when Lucy and her boyfriend Ethan are on their way back to the Light City after a weekend in Martha's Vineyard when Ethan is stopped, dragged off the train, and arrested for treason because there has been an eyewitness account that says that he was trading information to this radical group that lives in the Dark City. Ethan is saved because his doppelganger then steps out of the Dark City compartment of the train and uh, his doppelganger, it turns out, is not something that Lucy knew about and basically can only be created through the use of illegal dark magic, which Ethan's family has gotten away with because he belongs to one of the most powerful families in the Light City. So Ethan and Carwin are a really interesting duo. Um, Carwin has basically been told that he is not human his entire life, and Ethan has been sort of pampered and privileged his entire life. And Lucy was raised in the Dark City but is a light magician, and her mother was a light magician born in the Dark City, and then her mother was murdered, and basically she had to go through this whole political uh, machination in order to get her and her father out and into the Light City. Lucy is an absolutely fascinating character. She is incredibly ruthless to protect the people that she loves, which I think is great. It's basically what it means to be a hero in a Slytherin and what it means to be a woman in the public eye and there's so much going on in this book. I absolutely loved it. So number four on the list is going to be Challenger Deep by Neil Shusterman. This is one that I just mentioned in my previous video or the one before that. I said that this was probably going to be on my top five of the year. Here it is. Big surprise. This is a story about a young boy named Caden Bosch who is dealing with severe delusional mental illness and the beginning of the book is structured in a way where he is sort of telling two narratives simultaneously. There's the narrative of him with his family where he's going to school and they're going on vacations and he has this mostly normal life except that his brain keeps spiraling off into these paranoid delusions. And then there is the other narrative of Caden on a pirate ship, which is populated by a sort of fantastical group of characters. There is a pirate ship captain that talks exactly like a cliched pirate. There is a parrot that has an eye patch. There's a figurehead that talks to him. And I'm not totally sure that I was supposed to get what was happening this quickly, but to me it was very obvious very quickly that the pirate ship was basically Caden's own delusional experience of being in a psychiatric facility. So one of the reasons that I really loved this book is that Caden is a really compassionate and smart and insightful kid, even while he's in the midst of these manic delusions that are paranoid and making him question whether or not the, his parents are even real and all of these kinds of things that are incredibly difficult to even imagine your brain forcing you to think. The audiobook is really wonderful for this book, that's how I did it, and the narrator has a really good grasp of the different character voices because Caden Bosch is experiencing a lot of delusions, he has a lot of characters that he's created, and he does those voices really well. He just manages to imbue all these people with a real sense of life and personality, which I really loved. And so this book is sometimes a little bit difficult to read because it is a difficult subject, but oh my god, it was so beautiful and so moving and kind of sad, but definitely worth it. So the final book that I wanted to talk about today is one that I haven't talked about yet on this channel because I just finished it like a week ago or so. It is Maggie Steve Otter's The Scorpio Races. I included The Raven Boys, The Raven Cycle on my top five last year, so again, probably not a huge surprise since uh, Maggie Steve Otter is very quickly becoming one of my favorite authors, but this book is a standalone that was written before The Raven Cycle and it is based off of Kelpie mythology, so the sort of murderous seahorses. Um, it's not exactly Kelpies, but that is sort of where the sort of inspiration for it obviously came from. It is set on a small island that is off the coast of somewhere in Europe. We don't actually know exactly where, but probably Ireland-ish? I don't know. And the premise of it is that every year in October, murderous horses start coming out of the sea, and then because people are insane, they capture them and then ride them in a race on the 1st of November. There are two main characters. Um, there is Kate, who also goes by Puck, and then there is Sean, and Sean is the reigning champion of the Scorpio races. He has been working for the like main stable on this island, and he has been racing and has won the last four years, but he does not own the horse that he races, which is a red stallion named Kor that he absolutely adores and wants to buy off of the owner of the stables, except that the owner won't sell to him. 
And then Puck, who is entering the races for the very first time because she needs the prize money in order to save her family home. It's sort of difficult to explain exactly why I loved this book so much, except that a lot of it is based off of the idea that the island that they live on, which is the only one that gets these horses, is just sort of made to enthrall certain people. And Sean absolutely loves it, and Puck absolutely loves it. And I ended up kind of falling in love with it too. I also was one of those kids in middle school who was like completely obsessed with horses, so you know, this is kind of right up my alley. And there are certain authors that just have a way of like pulling my innermost thoughts and feelings and emotions and putting them in the voices of characters, and Maggie Steve Otter is one of them, and Puck and Sean were just really compelling, and the whole concept was really interesting, and I loved the horse mythology that was built into it, of the water and the island and the wind and the horses and all of that. This is also a fairly bloody book, because there are murderous horses everywhere. Uh, people die, <laughs> but it turns out. It's got a sort of old world sensibility to it, in a way that really appealed to me, even though it is set technically in the modern day, it feels like a story that could have happened a long time ago. And it was just one of those that once I picked it up, up, I kind of couldn't stop until it was done. So that is going to be it for this video. Those were my top five books of 2016. This is one of my favorite videos to do because I just get to talk about books that I love. Let me know if you've read any of the books that I mentioned, what you thought of them, or what your favorite book that you read this year was down in the comments, and I will see you guys very soon with another video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. Book, this is...